Chargeek is a notable brand in the charging, power bank, and portable power station scene for its iconic see through and cyberpunk inspired portable charger like the Storm 2 that I have right here. That features 100 watts charging output, great for hungry powered devices like my Apple Silicon MacBook Pro, more specifically the M1 Pro chip. Design-wise, Chucky has inspired a lot of copycats in the market to a point they also want to have their see-through PCB design, but Shark Geek is the OG in this cyberpunk-inspired design. Now, the shell is not only see-through, but it's fireproof. Aside from that, looking at this cover right here, the I.O. side, as well as this grey bar right here across to the sides right here, those are aluminium it helps to dissipate heat from the battery and pcb outwards to the side so when you're charging the power bank or charging a device it feels a little bit warm it's still manageable to the touch it helps to dissipate the heat so it's functionable right here aside from that let's go on to the geeky information you can see all your in your little stuff right here PCB components, a little bit of wordings right here. You can see what battery cells they're using here. I'm using the Samsung cells. Here is the airplane travel information. Overall, it looks very geeky, gamery, cyberpunk. You can call it anything, but I say it's an art piece. I just lay it down to a corner of my table, put my MacBook, do some typing. It just looks like a designer piece and something that I want to own. It does not look like a plain power bank. So, I like it, but that's not the only thing I like it. A long press also activates the screen. The screen is not only colorful, but it packs ton of information. This is a 1.14 inch IPS display that is also bright and you can see it during sunny daytime conditions. Now the power bank right here is measuring 151 millimeter across, 59 millimeter depth, and also 46 millimeter width. Now, despite its compact size, it's really dense and it weighs hefty weight. It weighs 592 grams. A little bit on the heavy side, but consider its portability, its power output, and its capacity right here. This is for power, hungry power users like me. So aside from that, the power bank also comes included with the uh, decently length or a long type c to type c cable right here that is capable up to 100 watt charging this is my validation test it does support 100 watt charging aside from that they also provide you a rough pouch right here for storing the power bank right here i wish they put it in a soft carrying pouch that adds into the premium and prevents scratches Aside from that, it's really simple. They also provide you a manual that's only one page because the power bank is geeky but it's easy to use. So the screen auto boots up once you are charging the power bank or charging a device, but a long press on the power and function button would also boot it up. Once it's boot up, you can see basic information like your battery, voltage, amperage of the batteries, how they are juicing in or juicing out, as well as the temperature of your batteries, your chip and the timer right here how many times you have spent charging your devices in and out now when you're charging your device in and out you also will see the wattage the voltage and amperage but we're going to focus this section of the lcd for the settings going into settings is easy long press it you'll be greeted with all the settings right here first is the dc output setup by default the dc mode is only charging in and not charging out here you can set it to charge it out and remember to turn it off when it's not in use and if you want it to do DC charging in because you cannot have charging in and out at working at the same time. It's only one mode uh, way. It's not like USB-C, bi-directional, work as automatically as possible. So remember to turn it off if you are using DC charge in like I do. So second option right here is your battery information. You can see the pairings, whether the voltage is high, the capacity, how many times it has been cycled, what's the battery life. So since this is a new power bank, it's still healthy. Going into the third option right here, here you can change your temperature, uh, you know, readings, whether in Celsius or Fahrenheit, I choose Celsius. Timer is like this now, I mentioned about the timer on the bottom right, right there. You can reset it to zeros to see how long you charge your certain devices, maybe throughout a week worth of vacation, something like that, or maybe one month worth of 
outing overseas, how many times you use this power bank. It's a good stat if you are that kind of geeky person. But going to the next settings right here is the di display settings. Here you can change the orientation of the display as well as you can make the display to sleep after 1 minute, 5 minute or off. I set it off because I want to see the stats permanently as I'm charging in and out for a long sessions. Now don't be mistaken that display sleep is like powering off. So the power bank do power off on its own uh, for some time. It takes several minutes but you can also go into the settings into the next option right here and manually off the power bank by a long press. So a long press is confirming, short press is going into different option. Very easy to use the power bank. When it comes to performance, it uses a 25,600 mAh battery cell configuration, a total of 8 cells in configuration right here at 3.65 volts. Basically, this is a 93.5 watt hour pack. So the battery is based on the Samsung 32E series 18650 cell. Each cell is rated at 3200 mAh at 3.65 volts and a maximum output of 6.4 amps. This is packing serious firepower. This is how it can max out the 100 watt charging via USB and the DC. Now, some regions may get the Panasonic cell instead, but I'm already impressed that SharkGig is using quality cells right here. Now, SharkGig also promised at least 80% battery capacity after 800 cycles as well. If bulky bifold wallets is annoying you in terms of taking in and out of your pants as well as giving you a weird fashion look that you have a bulge out of your pants, you may want to consider something compact and ultra thin like the Exa Smart Wallet right here. With a push of a button, you have quick access to all your cards, maybe for speedier payment or carrying government essential IDs. More importantly, Everything right here is protected because the wallet is RFID protected. No longer the days where you have to flip up your bifold, pick up the card, tap your card, put back the card, then take the receipt, put back the receipt, close the wallet, put in your pants, and maybe if you're rushed, you have to hold your wallet like this. It looks awkward versus holding something like this. I have the Axa Senate card holder which holds 6 cards easily in the main holder. While the elastic pocket strap allows you to add more cards or hold some cash, even better, I suggest getting the optional ultra thin solar powered tracker card where you can use your smartphone to find your wallet or your wallet to find your smartphone. Currently, Exa is running a 25% discount for sale. You can use my affiliate links found in the video description or the first pinned comment to get that goodies. Or you can share my promo code to your friends and family. Use Bitstripe as a promo code during the checkout for 25% discount as well. Looking at the individual ports in greater detail, first is the DC port right here which is rated for 72 watts input or 75.6 watt output. You must enable DC output in the settings to charge out of the power bank and disable it back if you want to use DC to charge the power bank. It's complicated, uh, DC works in analog mode, pulsing mode, it's not just like USB-C where it has a chip to detect whether it's inward or outward charging. Now my tests also show that it can reach 61 watt input and 74 watt output. A little bit lower because DC is complicated. That's where we have the main USB-C 1 port right here, which is rated for 100 watts input and output via Power Delivery 3.0 or PD, uh, as well as it also supports programmable power supply up to 105 watts output. Now my tests show it can reach 92 watts input and 125 watts output. Now when it comes to the secondary USB-C2 right here, it is rated for 30 watts output via PD 3.0 or Qualcomm Quick Charge 4.0 Plus. My test shows it can do 40 watts output. And the Type A right here, not to mention it, we're not forgetting it. It is rated at 18 watts output. My test show it can do 40 watts output. Now my test is a little bit extreme because I'm using a loader to stress each port to its maximum input and output capabilities right here. Please do not follow what I have done in this video. The purpose of this video is as a reviewer, my job is to validate, test and verify how each components and ports work so you guys can have a more confident purchase 
decision. So don't do what I'm doing. I'm literally risking my unit right here just to prove my point that it can work well. If the performance number sounds complicated to you, not to worry, I'll make it simplify for the common users right here. Based on our test, using the iPhone 13 Pro Max charging from 20% to 100%, the power bank will give you 5.8 times worth of charge. When it comes to the MacBook M1 Pro 20% to 100%, it gives you between 1.3 to 1.5 times worth of charge. Not too bad. Now, when it comes to charging multiple devices, the power bank right here can charge up to three devices simultaneously outwards. And I say three instead of four right here, because it has four ports right here, is because of these two ports right here, the USB-C one and the DC output port. So if I'm using the Shark Geeks official cable right here, plug it in, and I try to plug in either one of my DC cables that I have, I'm gonna use the Tina's one right here, I can't jack it in fully. You can see that there is some space. Uh, I can't even jack it in. So you are limited to charge only three devices simultaneously. I wish in a future version, Shark Geek actually space out the DC to be a little bit more space from the USB-C one a port that way we can have like four devices simultaneously charging outwards but again uh, currently it's only limited to three it's fine it's good for everyday usage four would be just amazing now aside from that this power bank right here can support pass-through charging where you can have one input port charging the power bank and two output ports to charge any of your devices now aside from that this power bank right here has five levels of built-in protection and there is a physical reset button when you remove the side cover right here and that button you press a short press your heart reset the entire management operating system right here the chip right here and you basically have a clean start think of it as a factory reset but for a power bank so here's the summary this is a powerful compact power station with 100 watts charging capability that is still airplane carry certified. The charging output often delivers more than advertised but it still depends on your input device, how their charge controller works, their software management, etc. For me, DC is a little bit finicky, that's why modern charging uses PD uh, protocol where the chip and the software talks to each device and try to boost up the speed accordingly. So I always love PD 3.0 charging capabilities and protocols. Now, looking at the price of this Shark Geek Storm 2 right here, it's well onto the premium side. But again, it's well featured, not just for its geeky design and geeky LCD and geeky control, but what it can deliver for each output when it comes to charging out of the power bank. I would say it's well designed, well performance, the quality speaks for itself and it's not many brands coming from China that is capable to fight mega corporation who is charging more and actually giving less. So despite being premium, this is actually affordable for its class, for its purpose, for its capacity and it's a steal and a recommendation to get one as a designer piece a performance piece and a portable power station yes i would recommend this so i include links where you can purchase this power bank down below in the video description do check it out do get it because they have limited stock and it's not often they they mass produce this because this one takes a lot of dedication and you know fine tuning and all this mumbo jumbo you know all this quality assurance just to produce the power bank in batches so get it while you can Thank you guys for watching this video. Remember to subscribe to this channel so you can see more power banks and charging related videos coming soon. And I hope to see you guys in another Shark Geek uh, video. I think they're going to send me the Shark Geek capsule soon. So stay tuned to that video. Till then, stay safe guys and I'll see you guys in the next video.